Whenever we are asked to analyze data and comment on the expected result or the most common response, we tend to find a number that would summarize the result. We tend to use summary statistics like mean, median, or mode. Most often people jump at using mean or the arithmetic average. But is it the most appropriate measure to use? So what are the applications of mean, median, and mode in real life scenarios? Recently, I had subscribers asking me about when and where to use mean, median, and mode. And that's what we are going to do in this video. So let's get rolling. I have explained the concept of mean, median, and mode in this video over here. You can watch it to know the fundamentals of mean, median, and mode. However, since the applications of mean, median, and mode in real life scenarios were not adequately addressed, I decided to do the honors. I'm Shreesh and you're watching my channel Learning Puree, where you will get tips and tutorials to help you grow faster in your professional and personal life. So if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. Click the bell icon to get notified every time I post a video. Your small gesture tells YouTube to push this video to more like-minded people. All right. Before we proceed, here is a quick recap of what these measures of central tendency mean. Mean is an arithmetic average of all the values where we divide the sum of all the values by the number of observations. Median is the middle value when all the observations are lined up in an ascending or a descending order. And mode is the value with the most number of occurrences. To get a detailed understanding of the basics of descriptive statistics, you should watch this video over here, for which the link is posted in the description below and the info card above. I would encourage you to watch the current video till the end to discover some useful tips and interesting features I have discussed about these metrics along the way. Now that is done and dusted, let's look at where we can use them. Whenever we are asked to analyze data and comment on the expected result or the most common response, we tend to find a number that would summarize the result. We tend to use summary statistics like mean, median, or mode. Most often people jump at using mean or the arithmetic average. But is it the most appropriate measure to use? Let's look at this example. In a math class, the marks obtained by 13 students during the exam are as follows. The teacher wanted to know how the class was faring overall. The immediate tendency is to take a mean or an arithmetic average of the marks obtained by students. In this case, it will be 43.14 or approximately 43. This is obtained by dividing 302, which is the sum of all the marks divided by the number of students. Obviously, all except one student have scored below 40, which is the passing percentage. And they seem to be having a tough time in the class. If the teacher used this average of 43 to describe the performance of the class, then she would be overestimating the performance of the class on the higher side. Based on how the class actually performed, this clearly cannot be true, right? In this data set, there is one number that is 99, which is polarized to one extreme. Here, the data is described as not evenly distributed or skewed. Now let's take another example. The government was studying food grain output of one state in a country across seven years from 1969 to 1975. The output measured in metric tons is in this table across seven years from 1969 to 1975. If we summarize the performance for this data set using mean, then we would have 33.5 metric tons of average food grade production across the seven years. Like usual, this average is obtained by dividing 234.5, the sum of production across seven years by seven. Using this average figure, the performance for five years appears above average, barring the two years that is 1971 and 1972, where it is below average. This again underrepresents the performance. In both these cases we discussed, we observed two peculiar features in the data. First, the data is skewed to one end, that is there are extreme values or outliers in the data. And second, the arithmetic average assigns equal weightage to each data point in the data set. That is, we divide each data point in both the data sets by seven, which is the number of observations. However, here's the caveat. In the first example of marks in the math exam, we have data set that is polarized or skewed to one end. In the second data set of food grain production, years 1971 and 1972 were two years that the state faced an extreme drought resulting in lower produce. 
both these two cases have extraordinary scenarios. In the second case, the data is not only skewed, but also equal importance is being given to two years of drought against five years of good rainfall during the comparison. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Now let's look at doing something different. For the math exam performance, if the teacher wanted to summarize the performance, she could use the median. When we use the median, we get 35 as a middle figure for the class performance. There are exactly 50% of students above and below this figure. Hmm, this seems to work well to accurately describe the performance of the class. For the farm produced data using median, 45 works out to be the middle figure. 45 provides an acceptable average production across years despite the two years of drought. So there are instances when not jumping at taking the arithmetic average or the mean is actually beneficial. Now that we are aware when not to jump at using the arithmetic average, here is one more example. Let's say you're working for a manufacturer of soft beverage like Pepsi or Coke, who uses refined sugar in the manufacturing process. Seven months of data of sugar utilization in their factory is laid out in this table. And now you are tasked to budget for likely production expenses in the year to come. So with our newfound understanding, let's work it out. We observe that unlike the earlier two cases, the data is not skewed to one or any end. The data is evenly spread or distributed across the seven months. That means that there are no extreme values to deal with in this data set. The arithmetic average of this data set comes to 219 metric tons obtained by dividing 1533 the sum of the data by seven. On a simple comparison with the data set, this value appears to be very acceptable. The company can safely use this figure of 219 metric tons as an average sugar utilization for manufacturing in budgeting for their production expenses. To help you figure out when to use mean and median, I have summarized a few thumb rules for using mean and median over here in this table. We can safely conclude that we can use the arithmetic average or mean to summarize our data in the following instances. First, when we have evenly distributed data, that is, the data is not skewed or does not have extreme values. Second, when we need to use all the data available. And thirdly, there are no special circumstances like the drought in agricultural produce affecting the importance given to each data point. And in case, if you're violating the conditions one and two, we can consider using the median. As promised, here is a quick tip. Do you know we can use the mean to study expenses like food and electricity consumption in the household to budget for expenses every month? This way you can monitor and set expense targets to plan for your savings. Before we move on to discussing the application for mode, if you have found value in this information so far, please like and share the video with your friends and acquaintances. This motivates me to create more good content for you. On the other hand, it makes you look cool when you help your friends to improve their understanding. And oh yes, the manufacturer of the soft beverage company is reminding you to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to get notified every time a video is posted on this channel. Now, in this next example, we have a manufacturer of ice cream who wants to choose a popular flavor of ice cream for manufacturing. He employed a consumer research firm and conducted a survey of 100 people. They were asked to choose the most liked flavor from amongst four flavors of ice cream. The choice given to the consumers was chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and peach. So how do you choose the flavor that would most appeal to a group of people? Well, from this data, it's a no brainer that many people chose the chocolate flavor. So when we choose the most common response or the most frequently occurring response, we are using the mode. Did you find this amazingly simple? Then here's one more case. A retail shoe store owner has observed that every month he has many shoe sizes that are not sold at all or stay in the stock for a long time. He often must carry out an unseasonal sale offer to clear the stocks. Maintaining long-standing stock or dead stock has become commercially unviable for him. He had observed that sales for each shoe size were fairly consistent across each month. So he decided to take the average of past 12 months. He undertook a statistical analysis of various shoe sizes sold by him and created the following table. The table depicts the average monthly sales in number of shoes sold for each shoe size. 
The analysis indicated to him that sizes 6, 7 and 8 are the most sold sizes. These were the modes of the data set. We can therefore see that we can have more than one mode in a data set. Here's something interesting. Using the frequency of the sold items, we observe that even size 10 is sold in sufficiently large numbers. Therefore, we can advise the retail shoe store manager to even stock size 10. Mode is a useful measure in case we wanted to decide on more than one summary item. Not just that, it can also help you choose when you have data on a categorical variable like the one we saw in the case of ice cream flavor preferred. Like the median, mode does not get affected by extreme values. However, when you have continuous values like 122.2, 34.5, 37.9 and so on, there is less likelihood of obtaining a repeating value and finding a mode is either difficult or impossible. Mode is a useless measure in such instances. Therefore, continuous values are best handled by mean and median as against mode. So here's the comparison table updated for mode. You can look up this video on basic statistics to gain an understanding on categorical and continuous data. The link for this is posted in the description below as well as in the info card above. So alright, here's an important tip. So next time you're confused on which measure of central tendency or average to use, first consider observing the range and the distribution of the data. This will give you a far better understanding combined with the thumb rules in the comparison table I have shared with you to decide which measure of average to apply in a real life scenario. Before I share another quick tip with you, if you have not yet subscribed, do consider subscribing and clicking on the notification bell. If you did find value in this video so far, don't forget to like and share the video with your friends and acquaintances. All your gestures motivate me to keep on churning out more good content for you. So as promised, here is another quick tip. Do you know you can categorize the items and tools used in your household based on mode to help you organize the household? The most used items can stay in the most reachable places as against the less used items. Similarly, you can even clear the household of unused and less used items by selling them off and replacing them with something more useful. This will help you clear an awful amount of clutter in your house. So leave a yes in the comment below if you have used mode to help you organize your household. Also do let me know in the comments below by typing yes if you have used mode in any other place other than your profession. And yes, where have you used it? To know more about how data is collected, you could watch this video over here. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Till the next time, stay healthy and stay peaceful.